Well, let's go back to that breaking news on the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. That new trial data not only shows high efficacy against symptomatic COVID and hospitalizations, but also that the vaccine offered strong protection for older people. So what could this mean for global confidence in the vaccine and potential approval here in the U.S.? Director of the Jenner Institute at Oxford University, Professor Adrian Hill, is here to tell us more about it. Professor Hill, thanks so much for being here. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, so good morning or good afternoon to you, I suppose. So this phase three uh, data from Oxford AstraZeneca's U.S. trial shows some really promising results. Can you kind of translate them for those of us who aren't scientists? What do these numbers really mean from a practical standpoint? Thank you. Well, the most important number there is the 100 percent efficacy against severe COVID hospitalization and death that confirms a European trial that was also partly done in Brazil, uh, showing 100% efficacy against that most important endpoint. But the other number, the 79, 80% 80 efficacy is important too against clinical COVID. And as you mentioned, particularly in the older adults, where until now we had to rely really on surveillance data from the vaccine in deployment, where the efficacy looks very high in older adults. But now we have those data in a clinical trial. And so, well. so this is really ticking the boxes and uh, completing the story. So how does the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine compare to the other vaccines like the Pfizer, the Moderna and the Johnson & Johnson vaccine? Yeah, well, the best way to compare, of course, is to do a head-to-head, -head, and that's been happening in these effectiveness studies in the UK, where really you can't pull them apart. They're both well over 80% effective, even with a single dose. So I don't think we need to worry about efficacy of these uh, excellent vaccines. Uh, we're, we're there on, on that. The issues now are safety and, and supply. And so let's talk safety, because we did recently see some countries stop using the AstraZeneca vaccine because of concerns over side effects, the main one being blood clots. What's the latest on that, and what do you hope uh, comes of this new data now that you have? Yeah, well, the latest is, of course, the European Medicines Agency, representing 27 European countries, looked very carefully at this last week and came to the conclusion that there was no higher incidence of thrombosis in the vaccinees compared to the controls. And that's clearly true on a, a lot of data that's been reviewed. There is some residual question that's being looked about at about a very, very rare uh, complication that's seen in maybe one in a million people. Very difficult to tell if that's anything to do with the vaccine, as the agency said. But their clear advice was carry on vaccinating. The use of the vaccine vastly outweighs any potential risk, given the benefit of preventing COVID with, with high efficacy. All right. So now the big question is when. When will you apply for emergency use authorization here in the U.S.? And if that's granted, how big of an impact do you think that could have on trying to get this country vaccinated? Yeah, well, that will happen in the, in the next few weeks. We heard this morning from AstraZeneca, who are really moving on this. Then it's up to the FDA to analyze the data and hopefully give approval. The reason it's kind of urgent is there are a lot of doses sitting around ready for use in the U.S. I heard the number 30 million would be available on day one from AstraZeneca this morning, 50 million in the first week, and then something, say in the first month, and then something like 15 million doses a month from then on. So that would be a useful top-up to what's going on already, particularly when you remember, remember that this vaccine is stored in a regular refrigerator and very, very easy to deploy compared to, say, RNA vaccines. Yeah, that will make a big difference. Professor Adrian Hill of Oxford University, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us today. We appreciate it. Pleasure. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.